This is a video I put together to uh, talk about the Heathkit model IT2240 digital LC bridge, a piece of test equipment which, as far as I can tell, is not covered anywhere else on YouTube. Uh, because of this, I've been thinking for a few years, actually, about doing something on it so that there is some representation for this piece of test equipment. Many other pieces of uh, vintage Heathkit equipment are covered on other excellent uh, sites such as those uh, put together by Jeff Tranter. Uh, but since nobody else is covering the IT2240, I'm going to do so here. The Heathkit model IT2240 allows easy measurement of capacitance and inductance, as well as the associated loss or dissipation factor of the components under test. The meter measures capacitance in the range of 1 picofarad to 2,000 microfarads and inductance in the range of 1 microhenry to 2,000 henrys over an 8 decade range. Accuracy is plus or minus 0.5% except for the lowest range where it is plus or minus 0.1 picofarad or 0.1 microhenry. The component under test is connected to the meter using a 4 terminal Kelvin connector at the front panel. An extender can be used for components that are either too small for their leads to fit into the front panel connector, or too large or irregularly shaped to fit. I'm going to talk now about the basic circuit theory of this digital LC bridge. Pure capacitance and pure inductance are pretty easy to measure, but in the real world with real components we find that along with the capacitance and inductance, there's always some resistance and other kinds of losses, and taken together they add up to the impedance of the component. The trick to getting a good capacitance or inductance measurement is to first measure the complex impedance and then remove anything other than the actual capacitive reactance or inductive reactance, and then convert the reactance to a scaled capacitance or inductance value. This meter uses the phase relationship between reactance and resistance to isolate them from each other. When a sinusoidal AC excitation signal is applied to an impedance, the resistive part of the component responds in phase with the excitation signal, while the reactive part of the component responds 90 degrees out of phase with the excitation. The first part of the meter circuit generates a constant AC excitation signal at either 120 Hz or 1000 Hz, depending on the range selected by the user. The signal passes through a voltage control amplifier, then a power amplifier, and then an overvoltage protection circuit and a fuse before being applied to one end of the component under test. This is the high side of the component and is shown as EH on the diagram. An inverted copy of the same signal is applied to the opposite side, or low side, of the component, shown as EL in the diagram, via a trim potentiometer and capacitor to null out any impedance of the test leads or component leads. Another power amplifier and a bank of resistors work together as a combination current sink and current sense amplifier, and the EL side of the component is held at a virtual zero volt level by the circuit. The excitation voltage actually applied to the component under test is measured by a difference amplifier and fed back via a reference gain amplifier to the voltage correction circuit. A copy of this feedback voltage is passed through a phase shifter and full wave rectifier and then summed with a reference voltage in an error amplifier before being fed back to the excitation signal's voltage control amplifier. Thus, by constant correction, the AC voltage of the excitation signal applied to the component under test is held constant. The rest of this description will be in terms of measuring capacitance, but measuring inductance is similar. The meter circuit uses the fact that for a constant excitation voltage, the current through the capacitor will be proportional to the capacitance. The current from the EL end of the capacitor to the current sink amplifier is shown as IX in the diagram, but this current is still a mixture of the current due to capacitive reactance and the current due to resistance, and therefore reflects the entire impedance of the capacitor. The meter circuit includes a subsection that taps off the excitation voltage and shifts it by 90 degrees in phase, referred to in the diagram as the loss voltage control signal, and then sums it with the value and loss summing amplifier with the I sense signal coming from the current sense amplifier, thus canceling the non-reactive part of the measured impedance signal 
and leaving only the reactive signal that represents the capacitance being measured. The resulting signal passes through additional stages to rectify the AC signal to a DC signal and scale it to a range that the actual meter is able to display. The meter is comprised of a monolithic voltmeter IC that takes the incoming DC signal and displays it as a number on the LED display. The voltmeter IC uses a dual slope analog to digital converter scheme. The meter's range selector switch and mode switches are input to the range and sensing control circuit, which outputs several signals that are used by the various amplifier stages to change their operation as required by the type of component being tested and by the anticipated voltage range of the component. Not shown in this simplified diagram or discussed by me are the more nuanced aspects of the actual circuit such as the fact that some parts of the circuit are actually operating in a sort of switched mode that is synchronized to the excitation signal, and the fact that while the applied voltage is regulated for measuring a capacitor, in the case of inductors it is the current that is regulated. In addition, the meter allows an external DC bias voltage to be input from connectors on the rear panel, and this is mixed with the excitation voltage before being applied to certain types of capacitors that may be under test. Voltage variable diodes, also known as varicaps, are examples of a capacitor type that requires a DC bias voltage. Also, some of the intermediate signals are available via rear panel connections for use in more elaborate measurement schemes. The Heathkit IT2240 uses only linear components, either op-amps or transistors or electronic switches. There is no digital logic in the actual meter circuitry, although two digital logic ICs are in fact used in the range and sensing control circuit. Now for an overview of the outside of the meter. The left-hand side of the faceplate has the digital display using LED fairly large LED display modules and at the lower left of the display is the uh, lead null trim pot accessible through a hole in the front panel and then the uh, Kelvin connector located immediately below the display. On the right of the front panel are the three mode switches which determine whether you're measuring the dissipation of a uh, network that has resistance, capacitance, and inductance, and the range selector switch for selecting which uh, size of component in terms of capacitance or inductance you plan to measure. Taking a look at the rear panel of the meter, uh, the power cord enters on the left side and then to the right is a uh, terminal block for connection of the optional DC bias voltage and also for reading off uh, a couple of signals that may be used in, for example, plotting uh, characteristics of the capacitor or inductor under test. Note that the uh, meter is marked on the rear panel as meeting EIA 416 specification, which deals with uh, interference generated by components and equipment. And now for a uh, few views of the inside of the meter. The entire meter is built on a single folded sheet metal chassis with a cast uh, bezel for the front panel. I believe it's made out of zinc and painted black. The uh, sheet metal of the case is painted standard Heathkit test equipment blue. At the rear of the chassis is the power transformer, the uh, strain relief for the incoming power cord, and the terminal block for external signal connections. Along the right side of the uh, circuit board as viewed here is the uh, four voltage regulators which produce a plus and minus 15 volts and a plus and minus 5 volts um, as well as a I believe a positive 4 volt for one of the circuit blocks. Uh, the main circuit board is otherwise covered by all of the op amps and other analog components that comprise the rest of the meter circuit. Uh, there are several trim pots, but the majority of the board is covered by the various uh, ICs and transistors. You can see a couple of uh, heat sinked components. Those are the power amplifier uh, for feeding the excitation signal to the 
component under test, and the other one is uh, the current sink amplifier chip. Both of those are requiring heat sinks. Most of the signal switching on the board is handled with uh, the two uh, electronic switch ICs, but there are a couple of places where apparently that wasn't satisfactory, and there are a couple of uh, potted read relay assemblies as shown in these a couple of photos. They're easily recognized by the potting that fills the little plastic uh, enclosures that they're in. At the front of the main circuit board are the connections for the uh, range switch, which is a rotary switch and is actually wired to the board. It's not directly soldered to the board. And then the three um, mode switches, which are push-button switches that are actually soldered directly to the circuit board. Here's the rear side of the secondary circuit board, which is for the uh, Kelvin connector and also for the digital meter IC and the actual LEDs. And here is a front view of the same board as peeked through the cutout in the chassis, and also a top view showing um, the uh, end of the monolithic IC that handles the uh, meter readout. As usual for Heathkit test equipment, they tried to make everything pretty much self-contained without requiring a lot of other equipment to calibrate the equipment as you build it. And uh, this one's no different. Uh, you can calibrate the entire thing using uh, an ohmmeter, a, a high impedance voltmeter, and a set of uh, components that are shipped with the kit and shown here. Several capacitors and a uh, a uh, resistor with test leads on it and alligator clips and also a parallel um, RC network that is uh, used for testing. All of these are pre-measured by Heathkit before shipment and their values are written down on a slip of paper and kept inside the meter along with the components and uh, those are used to calibrate to these uh, pre-measured components. The uh, documentation for the meter consists of the usual excellent Heathkit assembly manual, which is uh, everything from uh, parts identification and inventory to step-by-step uh, -step PC board assembly, all connections and cables, mounting of components on the chassis, uh, troubleshooting, calibration, theory of operation, and uh, usually several other things as well. Very thorough manual, very well described and illustrated. And this is a 98-page manual, not including the covers. And then there is an accompanying large fold-out schematic diagram and also a 32-page large format uh, illustration book that um, includes uh, some of the parts identification drawings, the printed circuit board part locations, uh, some assembly diagrams, uh, some diagrams to support the theory of operation that's in the main manual, some diagrams to support troubleshooting text that's in the manual, and finally, uh, some x-ray views, as Heathkit like to call them, of the circuit boards. Here is a quick pan over the uh, schematic diagram drawing. Using Jeff Tranter's book on vintage Heathkit equipment, I verified that this meter was only produced in 1989 and 1990, just a two-year period. Um, I'm sure that I bought it shortly after it came out, and I'm glad that I did jump on it when I had a chance. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible to do so later. This is testing a 150 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. I really need to uh, touch up the null on this meter, but it's close enough for what I'm doing here. And it's reading 136.2 microfarads, 
which is within one microfarad of the value that was uh, specified by Heathkit for this uh, calibration part. I'm not sure if the part has drifted over time or if the meter has slightly, but um, since I haven't touched this up in, I don't know, something like uh, at least 10 years, probably longer, it's uh, not doing too bad. Now this is a uh, 15 microfarad part ostensibly, so I put it on the 20 microfarad range. Make sure I get the pluses and minuses set up correctly. And uh, that's reading 15.79. This component from Heathkit was specified as 15.67 when it was originally shipped. So again, we're still pretty close. Either the components drifted or the meter has slightly. This is a thousand microfarad part, so I've got it on the two thousand microfarad range. And uh, this was, uh, it's reading 861 microfarads, and uh, this part was originally listed as being 900, uh, or I'm sorry, 901 microfarads from Heathkit. I believe this is a 150 nanofarad part. And that's reading really close. It was listed as being 147.5 from the factory. So it's now reading 148.2. Pretty close. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, inductors laying around to measure, uh, but operation in the inductance mode is exactly the same and I've never used the uh, dissipation mode of this uh, meter uh, and I don't recall that there's any calibration associated with it either I think it just uh, uses the calibrations for the inductance and capacitance modes um, the lead null set screw is located right here on the front panel so it's easy to get to if you do want to null it out um, so, to sum up, I've always liked this meter. I don't have a daily use for checking inductors and capacitors, but uh, probably use it once a month and have since I bought it. And they did not make a digital LC bridge or really any capacitance inductance meter after this model. It was during that point when they were starting to phase out of the test equipment and they had only the cheaper stuff still available and uh, I'm really happy that I bought this meter when I did because it's been uh, an albeit infrequently used meter still a workhorse on my bench and uh, I really don't think I've seen anything else that does what this does without going to a very expensive piece of test equipment probably something bigger as well or using the limited capacitance inductance features that are built into some multimeters. This has got a pretty wide range and uh, uh, I think a pretty well-designed circuit and uh, it's a good piece of test equipment.